where your voice is heard. This is UBM Talk. Hi, this is Reverend Rick McCain. And I'm the Brenda McCain, and you're listening to Let's Stay Together Talk. Come on board the McCain train and take a two-hour ride with us. As we discuss topics like the next stop and making marriage work. So get your tickets now before the train leaves the station. Thanks for joining us. Take a seat on our train. You just arrived at Let's Stay Together Talk. All right, all right. Welcome to the Let's Stay Together, Let's Stay Together talk show. I'm your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my girl, my wife, my significant other, 22 years and counting, going on 22 years and counting, my covenant keeper, Arthur Brenda McCain. How you doing, baby? I hope you all like that new intro. How you? How did you like that, baby? I loved it. Yeah, that it was kind of good. Yeah, <laughs> we did. I, I like that. Doom. The beat. Doo, doo, I like the doo, beat. Doo, doo, it's a doo. going. Yeah, anyway. that's going to be a new intro for the Let's Stay Together talk. That's the new uh, tagline, too. It's called Let's Stay Together talk. Oh. And we have some talking to do today. But yeah. first of all, hey, baby. Hey, how you doing? We back to normal now. Uh-huh. I haven't seen you. I, I enjoyed you over the holiday. Yeah, I did. It was a, while, a long time together, and I enjoyed it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. they made me go back to work. I know. They, they had to. Somebody they, got they, to pay for that. They caught me and <laughs> brought me back. Yes, they did. They caught you. But you know what? I'm going to say this. To see God's glory, you must do what now, baby? You got to know our backstory. And you got to share our backstory. There you go. So you know what? We got uh, someone here that's going to share a great backstory. Now, tonight, this year, which I'm going to say Happy New Year to everyone yes, again. Happy, happy, happy New, New year. year. New Year. Now, this year, the McCain train will be introducing some new features on our show, like The Next Stop and Making Marriage Work, as well as many, many more. So we want you to sit back on our train and relax and Keep kick your feet up or walk around, whatever you do. Don't change that dial, that internet, don't move. Just ride with us tonight. Now, tonight, our topic on the next stop, which is our first hour from the streets to school, the alternative choice in making marriage work. And we have also the radical marriage. And our second our second hour of the show, but our first guest tonight is none other than the next stop man himself who made a stop over here, Sergeant Emery Holmes of Northern Regional Coordinator here <laughs> in Chicago, Illinois, which he is at, I believe it's Lincoln Challenge Academy. There's so much more I want people to know about that. And our second guest for our second hour will be David Steele, Making Marriage Work. And he is, I mean, making marriage work in our second segment. He is a family and marriage counselor and the author of Radical Marriage. So that's going to be interesting to all married couples. But we do want to welcome over here Mr. Sergeant Emery Holmes. I like saying that. Sergeant. And he dressed for the occasion, too. Well, thank you. Thank you for welcome. having me. And Happy New Year, everyone. Hey, well, Happy New Year. Thank you very much for coming on the show. So uh, I'm going to start off with just one of the questions. Lincoln... Uh, Challenge Academy. Yes. What yes. is that? Lincoln's Challenge Academy is a quasi-military style academy. It is run by the National Guards. Uh, it's been in existence for uh, about 20 years now. Uh, it started in 1992, and uh, it is one of several other locations throughout the, the the nation that has a Youth Challenge Academy. A lot of people want to call us a boot camp, but we are a military <laughs> school. Yeah. And was you know, and I think some of the military people might think it's a boot camp too because of what they go through. Uh, but I mean, you've decided to have a, a military school for young men. Uh, so, how did that come about? Well, the military school uh, that they decided to do was because the National Guards is a twofold army. Uh, we serve both the community, the state, and the federal government, uh, depending on what our mission is, and. One of our missions is it's a community. And uh, they came up with the powers that be in Washington, D.C., decided to have a youth challenge and let the National Guard sponsor uh, the academies all over the country. And Lincoln's Challenge Academy is just one of about 35 academies in different states. Oh, wow, that's great. 35 different states uh, an academy is that. So that gives a a young man around the world pretty much the opportunity to be a part of this. And are they chosen? uh, Are they drafted into this? You just 
you know, they've made some mistakes and, you know, yes. now they're forced into it. Right. How do they how does that come about where this young man is a part of the program? Well, it's never a, a forced uh, entry. Uh, they have to volunteer. They have to have a willing heart. They have to be mentally and physically able to achieve success from the academy because uh, the academy is actually, like I say, a quasi-military style. So uh, they get everything except combat training from us. Okay. So that means mama can't just say, I want my boy to go to this thing. Put him in here. Can she do something like that? Well, they can do that. <laughs> uh, it, it's dependent, it's depending on how much influence the parents have okay. over the child. Yeah. So the child has to accept it. Yes. The parents just can't force them. Right. They, you know, a parent, a parent of my caliber would say, "Yeah, well, this is where you're going. You ain't yeah. doing too well in school. Yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do this." Because it seems like what you're saying is that if I'm, if if I'm, you know, I guess the age limit is what sixteen to eighteen years of age. So if I'm sixteen years old and my parent wanted me to go, but yet I didn't want to go, right? I can refuse to be a part of. It. Well, mo- most of the time, nine times out of ten, they will go. Uh, because Mama said so, but as yeah. soon as Mama gets out <laughs> of the uh, the atmosphere, yeah. then their mindset change, and they I want to go home, and then uh, we call the parents and things like that. Uh-huh. But for the most part, a lot of the kids uh, uh, reflect and start adjusting to the academy. Okay, they it, must be doing something right, Rick, because I know recently when, weren't you guys profiled on CBS? Yes. I missed that. I've been trying to find You missed it. it? Yeah, I knew it was coming on. I was there. <laughs> I wasn't uh, the interviewee. My director and one of the generals of the uh, National Guard was there. Mm-hmm. And I was at the meeting. And uh, I missed the show. I don't know. What, what day did it come on? Saturday? I'm not sure what day, but I did some research on it. That the I love the fact that the students are the ones that's talking about how much their lives change oh, yes. by it's you guys. Great stories. I mean, it, it is just awesome. Like yeah. I said, and people need to check out the, our website because one of the guys, I forgot his name, he um, graduated, and I think he want to teach up there or he's trying to start his own business. Mm-hmm. It's so great when they come back and yes. didn't, like you said, didn't want to get involved in it, and then they realize this is something good. Yes, it, it propels them to the next level. And mm-hmm. how long have you been doing this? I've been with Lincoln's Challenge since 1998. Oh, okay. And, you uh, bet. <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, the regional coordinator uh, since 1998, and that's part of my backstory. Uh, I was working construction. Had no clue that I was going to be working with youth, but God prepared me for it. Amen. Uh, because when I was unemployed in the construction industry, you had those downtimes. Seasonal, on you? Yeah, it was seasonal, and you know I would have to find something to do. So I finally volunteered in, in the neighborhood and the community that I lived in, which was Broadview, and became a basketball coach. So I had two teams, a fourth, fifth, and sixth grade team, and a seventh and eighth grade team with my, with my, with my kids in, involved in that. And the next thing I know, God prepared me for that. And then the next thing I know, I had a job dealing with kids for the last 17 years. So you would say wow. that you was unemployed, and I said, no, that's probably a very difficult situation. How do you translate that information of going through that hard time of being unemployed to the challenge to the kids? Well, it's it's all about perseverance and keep keeping yourself active and busy and continue to pound the pavement and then look for opportunities that present themselves. And when opportunities don't present themselves, then you need to actually do something to keep yourself busy, which I did. I started volunteering. And uh, the volunteering uh, didn't lead to Lincoln's Challenge, but Lincoln's Challenge, because I was in the National Guard at the time, was there, and I never even knew it existed. A lot of people don't know it exists. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, if Tara didn't share with me, I was just the young lady that introduced me to you. I was totally like, who, what? You know, you're just thinking CPS mm-hmm, schools or mm-hmm. private schools mm-hmm. there. But what is, like, some of your fondest memories working there? Well, some of my fondest memories in 17 years, uh, of course, 17 years ago, I had a lot more energy. <laughs> uh, to deal with the Did youth. we all? Yeah, you know, <laughs> dealing with the youth, and uh, I was really uh, energetic in uh, how I approached the kids in a uh, military-style way to get them to uh, adjust, uh, even from the Chicago point of view, because they don't live here. They go down to Rantoul, Illinois, which is uh, down 57, about 120 miles. Cornfields. Cornfield. Yeah. Is that where you City. go every day? No. My oh. office is uh, actually it's down the street from you. Yeah. So let me ask you this. It says Lincoln Challenge. What 
what do you challenge them to do? <laughs> I mean, because it says challenge. How do you challenge these young men? Well, uh, and young women. Okay, okay, and okay. young women. Yes, and the way we challenge them is because it's a military-style uh, academy, there's uh, a lot of responsibility they learn uh, to coexist uh, with authority figures, just telling them what to do and how to do it, when to do it, uh, things like that. And uh, it's basically like um, any any movie that you've seen. Uh, my fondest uh, moment of a movie that really presents itself to the Lincoln's Challenge style of uh, training is Major Pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thought he was going to say a few good men or something <laughs> no, like Major that. Pain. <laughs> Major Pain. Who was that in that movie again? Uh, Damon Williams? Yeah, yeah Damon, Damon Williams. Williams in that movie, yeah. So it was really funny, though. It, it, it was, it's funny, it's funny, but it was, it was kind of accurate from the standpoint that he was one of the leaders. He was the leader of, of the kids. Yeah, okay. and so uh, that's that's basically how it is. We do. They get up in the morning. They got a regiment. They 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 run. They jump. They eat three meals a day. They go to school. They clean up. They make their beds. They write letters. Get in trouble. They pay for it. You know, and how they pay for it is by physical reinforcement. Yeah. So anytime they they get into uh, any situation, the physical reinforcement is push ups. <laughs> and when your muscles start reacting in in that way. Your muscles start to hurt. They say, "Well, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, uh, let me change direction." Uh, and so you go through a challenge with them. Uh, what what does that entail? Because now I, I just came to your program, mm -hmm. and you know I don't know what you're about to do with me. Take me to the beginning, to the end of the process of what actually happens to that young person that comes to the program. Well, first, what what happens is is that uh, the parents and the child will come to my organization. Uh, down the street is at 1910 South Calumet Avenue in Chicago. It's in the National Guard building. I have orientations like every Wednesday, every other Wednesday since 1998. And uh, if you don't mind, the number that they would call to schedule an uh, orientation is 312-842-7729. On that voicemail, you will hear my voice again, and it will tell you when the next orientation is. Once they come to the orientation, uh, they sign in. Parents on one side, we split the parents up. The parents on one side, the kids on the other. Why do you split them up? Uh, because they're not going to be with the kids once they once they leave uh, Chicago. So I, I actually do that piece uh, because it's, it's necessary for them to understand that your mom is not going to be there mm -hmm. to bail you out of this one. And so uh, one one thing we do is then I take them, uh, or split the parents up. The parents go learn how to do the the application process, and we have also a mentor that goes along with them. So a mentor has to fill out an application as well. That's a sponsor that will be uh, part of their life for about uh, about 14 months. Okay. Uh, they don't have to be, while the kid is in the residential phase of the program for 22 weeks, they write letters, mentor gets trained, and uh, the, um, the, uh, the kid continues to function as a cadet. Uh, the application process on my end at the orientation site is simply uh, I do some push-ups, uh, mm -hmm. some sit-ups. I, I tell them what to do. If they don't do it, then I understand what, where they're at, so I'll, I'll challenge, challenge them a little bit. Uh, on what <laughs> Some of them don't like to be challenged. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it's, it's mainly it's almost like a, uh, a selection process mm -hmm. because if they can deal with me for those little 45 minutes I got them, they can deal with the program for the 22 weeks. That's you, my philosophy about it. Okay, Sergeant Holmes, how do you develop um, trust with them? How do they know they could come back to you and really trust you and that you'll be there for them? I, I think the trust factor comes in with uh, the relationship that I, I, I talk to them about. My story is no different from theirs as a kid. Uh, I was uh, part of the Chicago lifestyle. And one day I just grew up and became the man I am now. But uh, I talk to them in, in such a way that the body language of trust is already there. Because kids, they, they might listen to you, but they're not understanding what really is I'm saying until I say something that's relevant to them. Right. And so uh, once I do that, the trust comes and they, they start sharing. And then uh, my, my, uh, my story to that is, I keep their trust confidential. I pray for them. 
uh, make sure that uh, there is some type of covering over their lives, mm-hmm. and, and they and they do what they have to do. For well, the most part. So let me ask you this question: Do you do? We're talking about a, a physical challenge. Do they go through any mental challenges at all? Oh yeah, the mental challenge is uh, learning to deal with authority, authority figures, mm-hmm. somebody that's telling you when to wake up, when to put your clothes on, when to take a shower. Mm-hmm. When to go to the bathroom, uh, all of those things are part of the military lifestyle. Breaking down character and building character up where they don't even know it's being done. Uh, but is it harder for girls to go through this? I think the girls are stronger than the young men. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of times, <laughs> <laughs> I, in 17 years, that's been my it's been my recollection of what's what goes on. And no is it, is girls. It, I'm sorry, is it that they're stronger or that they deal they, with um, the me, authority more, uh, better? Mentally, they're, they're stronger. Some of them are physically just as strong as the men, but oh. mentally, they are up to par, yeah. even higher. And so now this, this kid is coming into this program, and they're, they're brought there. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that most of these kids are brought here because they're not doing well in their own school. Right. And right. they're not doing good, you know, right. educationally as well. There's a lot of different issues yeah. for why kids come. Um, to say the least, there are some kids that come because there's a loophole and they don't like school. Yeah, School's not challenging for them, so they found this loophole that, well, I'll go get my GED and, and break off to college quick wow. and, and get out of there. Uh, others come because they've had some run-ins with the law. Uh, we don't take any violent criminals or any uh, deviates, but uh, we do give uh, juveniles a second chance for minor misdemeanor crimes. Um, so uh, most of the time, the kids that we receive are don't have enough credits to graduate or too far behind and cut class so much. They got kicked out for whatever reason at school, particularly fighting, yeah. things like that. So there's an educational background to this as well. They do get school right. credits so they can get a GED or a diploma. Right. They, they get a GED. It's, it's considered by the state of Illinois an adult education facility. Okay. Now, how long do they have to be a part of the program? Uh, the program is approximately 17 months. It's broken down into two phases. First phase is 22 weeks, which is the five-month period of time. Once they uh, graduate from that piece, the, uh, they should be doing something productive when they, when they leave the academy. They come back home. And... To me, that is the most challenging piece because that's, that's the part where you can actually go back to doing what you did before you yeah, left. Yeah, and you have to see if they're going to retain everything that they learned. Right. Do you um, stay in contact with them once they leave? Yes, they have a case manager. Uh, the case manager is all stationed down in Rantoul. And uh, Chicago is not the only uh, region in, in Chicago. We have, uh, we have uh, regions in... Peoria, Springfield, Peoria, yeah. huh? <laughs> Champaign, East St. Louis, Chicago, and North Riverside, which is my sister, my sister region, uh, Region B. We take care of everything up north, north of I eighty is ours. Yeah. So let me ask you this: You just said it only takes seventeen months to go through this program. Yes. I've got a question for you. I'm a, I'm a young person now. I can't stay in school. Why would I go through a four year program? when I could just skip school and go 17 months with you all and get a GED and go to college. I mean, what are you offering me at that 17 months that's, that's equal to the four years of college? I mean, of high school. Of high school. Yeah. Well, one, one thing uh, they, they have is a, a, a shot of discipline, a shot of responsibility. They learn how to work as a team. They become team players. And they have a go-getter spirit uh, because we've taught them that. There's uh, a lot of movement going on. You can't just mosey on along. It, everything is urgent. It's, it, you you got to put some emphasis in what you do. Uh, one of the things that I, when I was talking about loopholes, some folks do that because they understand that that's a lot easier than going through the challenge of high school. Yeah, but do they get the same kind of educational assistance? Because, right. I mean, I can easily sit there and do 17 months because that's like, you know, doing a year and a half or something like that. But am I getting the same curriculum that's right. going to help me with college? Because if right. my goal is to go to college, 
is that 17 months going to prepare me just as much as that four years is going to be? I, I, I think it, I, I think it does uh, simply because the GED is not very easy to get, and uh, some of the kids that go in there are uh, they come out smarter in some areas. Um, one of the things that we do is there's a scholarship piece to go along with it. The state of Illinois, as we all know, we uh, we're in some financial issues. But uh, for the most part, there are some scholarships still available for them to go to any junior college in the state of Illinois. So my advice to, uh, to the youth that uh, go to college from my region is to go to uh, junior college, city colleges of Chicago, uh, uh, what is the South Suburban, uh, things like that, those kind of colleges, to get adapted, get, get themselves ready to go to the four-year level. And besides that, it's cheaper. Yeah. So that's really it. Oh, okay. Um, Sergeant, and, I, and I'm Tracy. I generally do the um, social media here, so I have a few questions from Facebook for you. Okay. And one of those questions are, how many people, I mean, how many of the, the young people go on to college? Do you have any numbers um, that reflect that? I'm quite sure we do have some numbers, um, uh, but just from my standpoint, uh, 17 years of just off the top of my head, I, I would say our numbers are about 55 to 60% of the kids at some point decide to go to college. They, they might want to rest a little while once they get home. Then they say, well, <laughs> I need to do something different. Let me, let me get back on the grind. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's about 65 to 70%. So yeah. it is almost equal to CPS because a lot of CPS students don't go to college, though. Right. It's like... Fifty percent from well last year it was it was really split half and half with CPS that some children choose not to take a year off because I know right. I did it take a year off and then they go back. Yeah, that's one of the things that I, I've seen over my years of being here. Uh, one other thing I, I just want to really put on the table uh, for the for the audience is that uh, even though Lincoln Challenge is sponsored by the National Guard, we do not advocate them joining the armed force uh, that was going to be the next as, as a as a uh, uh, a siphon for the military that is not what we do however some kids gravitate to the military lifestyle and they choose to go in after that and it's so. typically because of the challenge teaches them to uh, help with authority and and right. things of that nature so they they're more structured to go into that program right and they uh, do well yeah they do extremely well uh, matter of fact um, one kid in particular, I'm going to say his name. I hope he's listening. Uh, <laughs> his name is Brandon Walton. Brandon has to be at least 24 or 25 now. Uh, I'll never forget Brandon because Brandon told me, Sergeant Holmes, what do I have to do to be like you? Mm. I said, well, first got to get through the challenge first. Hmm. He did that, and he joined the National Guard's immediately following uh, graduating from Lincoln Challenge. He went in and became a National Guard member. He, he, he's a go-getter attitude, and he actually <coughs> works for us now as a cadre. Oh, that's great. So he went back. What is a cadre? Cadre are the leaders, the authority figures in their lives, the mother, father, sister, brother. Now, that's why I was saying Major Payne. You got to really look at it because Major <laughs> Payne I was, he was I am <laughs> your mother, your father, your sister, your brother in here. In here. <laughs> um, and, I, and, again, I'm glad that you asked that question. Another social media – I mean, you said that another social media question was how many um, students come back to help with the program. So, obviously, at least one. <laughs> well, yeah, at least one. That's just one off the top of my head. Uh, a lot of them do. Um, they do it in their own different ways. Um, I have a lot of – I've been there long enough to be two generations strong. Mm. Uh, I have kids that started in was 16 in 98, got 16-year-old kids now. They bring their kids there. So I have, I have uh, cadets bringing back uh, or talking to somebody else and telling them that they can get through the program, come on, join. So they'll bring them on to see me. Now, that's the only opportunity we have for uh, advertisement is word of mouth. Hey, we thank you very much for coming on the Lincoln Challenge, but now we've got a challenge for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, we're going to do the McCain the McCain Express. Okay. No hesitation now. All right. 
Is your favorite sport a convertible red, hot, red, or jet black car? Jet black. Okay. <laughs> Were you a teacher's pet or a pet? No. I, I teacher's was, pet or a class clown? <laughs> uh, I was the class clown. <laughs> okay. You're headed to your best vacation spot. Is it a cruise along the coast or a week at your favorite amusement park? Uh, cruise along the coast. You're craving fast food, chicken. Kentucky Fried or Popeyes? Popeyes. Amen to that. Okay, so we're doing the McCain Train <laughs> Express here. Now, it's Friday. Are you painting the town or curled up in front of your favorite show? Curled up in front of my favorite show. <laughs> Here's, we got two people, Gladys Knight or Aretha Franklin? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you better think. <laughs> in your favorite dress for success, are you in a, a um. suit? Are you in a suit or a leather jacket? I'm in a suit. You're most excited about free tickets to the Super Bowl, the World Series. If the Cubs is in it, the World Series. I like that answer, man. <laughs> uh, peach cobbler or a five-layer chocolate cake? Peach cobbler. Oh, you didn't like that answer. You're curled up in a romantic evening by a fireplace. Is it wood burning or gas? Ah, uh, it's wood. Okay. Okay, then. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Dog. Amen. It's a milestone birthday, and there's a big party with all your friends. Did you plan every detail, or was it a total surprise? It was a total surprise. You're a world-famous musician. Are you blowing a horn or playing a guitar? I'm playing a guitar. You get to be a superhero. Are you a Superman or a Batman? I'm a Superman. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Trek. Thank you. All right. <laughs> hey, we've had uh, Sergeant Holmes on here talking about Lincoln Challenge Academy. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that interview with him, and we'll be right back. Yes, we will be. We'll be right back with some more things, and I think we'll be coming on to the Motivational Mojo. Yeah, so get ready for Mojo, Motivational Mojo. It's going to be a new thing that we're doing that we hope you enjoy. This is Reverend Rick McCain. Let's stay together talk. music that means it's time for motivation mojo listen right now as brenda mccain will give you the motivational mojo of the day you can win movie tickets go to facebook or our website now brenda mccain will tell you more about today's motivation mojo the new year is here and you have officially been blessed to see 2016 so what are you going to do with it are you going to make a difference in someone's life, or are you going to find the purpose in your own life? Whatever the case may be, what is inspiring you to do it? Is it your spouse, kids, your health, a business, a relationship, or the mighty green? You know what I mean, the money. What is going to get you up and moving when you don't even want to get out of bed? Let's be honest. The resolutions that we vow not to break is easy to make and easier to break. And that's all in the first week. So what is your motivation mojo? Let me share mine with you. I'm not making any resolutions this year. Why? Because I break them after the first few weeks. I know, I know, I'm bad, but I am walking in my truth this year. My provocation is going to become my daily ritual, and that is to become a better person than I was the previous day. I am inspired to come one step closer to my dream by taking the time to dig deeper to get to my purpose in life. Now, this is my reason I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. What is your motivation? Good evening. The Let's Stay Together show presents Point of View by Donna Terrell. I love getting a new calendar for the new year. I like the decorative ones, preferably with African-American artwork. Have you ever looked at a brand new calendar and wondered what the new year might hold? There are endless possibilities. Have you thought about what new opportunities might come your way this year? A new job, a relationship, 
a valuable connection, a chance to do something you've never done before. We have no idea what the Lord might do. Now some opportunities might involve other people. Let's also pray to recognize opportunities to do something to help somebody else. Maybe a sick friend or relative needs a grocery store run, and that's something we can do. You might not be a selfish person, but a lot of times we don't want to step out of our comfort zone. I myself am very guilty of this. Now think about something you really want to happen. Pray that the Lord gives you a heart desire opportunity and that you'll recognize it when it comes. Some things come only once, and if you pass them up, they won't be coming around again, or you might have to wait a long time before it does. You have not because you ask not. Let this be the year to ask for and expect great things from God because He's great. He can do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Let's expect exceeding abundance in 2016. For Let's Stay Together, this is Point of View by Donna Terrell. Welcome back to Let's Stay Together Talk. Thank you for joining us and listening and staying with us. We had just did an interview with the Mr. Sergeant Emery Holmes from Lincoln Challenge. Tell us, um, actually, where can they locate this at? Well, our uh, we have two locations. The uh, first one I'm going to give you is mine. It's depending on what side of town you're from. Uh, but the first one, the most important one, is mine, which is 1910 South Calumet Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. We're in the National Guard building. And the number that you can reach us at is 312-842-7729. All right. Well, th- thank you uh, very much, I'm sorry. Much, can man. I ask you one quick question? Sure, sure. Is there an age limit and is there a cost, uh, minimum or maximum cost? Okay. There's no cost. Uh, the age limit is 16 to 18. You must be 16 by the time the program starts. We have two cycles, January and July. So okay. if he falls within that cycle of 16, he's okay. He All can- right. Thank you very much, sure. sir, Thank for uh, coming in and uh, sharing Thank with you us on that. Having me. You'll be able to find some more information about it on our Facebook and uh, our webpage. Hey, uh, we've got a new thing we're doing here now. All our shows are going to be new this year. We're doing some new segments. You're going to learn more about uh, the McCains and also uh, Tracy Howard, who is going to be a part of our show as well. Uh, we're going to do this thing called Motivational Mojo. So I want you to listen to this. And we're going to ask you a question about what is your motivation. And you can Facebook us uh, and get win movie tickets if you call in. So, Alvin, play that motivational mojo so they can know what they can call in and win tickets about. If you're hearing this music, that means it's time for Motivation Mojo. Listen right now as Brenda McCain will give you the motivational mojo of the day. You can win movie tickets. Go to Facebook or our website. Now, Brenda McCain will tell you more about today's Motivation Mojo. The new year is here, and you have officially been blessed to see 2016. So what are you going to do with it? Are you going to make a difference in someone's life, or are you going to find the purpose in your own life? Whatever the case may be, what is inspiring you to do it? Is it your spouse, kids, your health, a business? a relationship, or the mighty green. You know what I mean, the money. What is going to get you up and moving when you don't even want to get out of bed? Let's be honest. The resolutions that we vow not to break is easy to make and easier to break. And that's all in the first week. So what is your motivation mojo? Let me share mine with you. I'm not making any resolutions this year. Why? Because I break them after the first few weeks. I know, I know, I'm bad, but I am walking in my truth this year. My provocation is going to become my daily ritual, and that is to become a better person than I was the previous day. I am inspired to come one step closer to my dream by taking the time to dig deeper, to get to my purpose in life. Now, this is my reason I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. What is your motivation? 
Okay, now y'all heard my motivation. I'm going to go start off with Sergeant Holmes here. What is your motivation for 2016? What gets you up and gets you going? Well, what's going to get me uh, up and going is me trying to finish my master's degree at Chicago State University. Hey, man, Ooh. master's in what? Social work. All right, oh, great. CSU on the map, 95th and King Drive That's went right. there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, now I got confused because I thought you wanted to say what motivated me to get up and move into this morning. Yeah. yeah. To this morning or this year. Oh, let's talk about this morning because this year is still coming on. I got up this morning because we have a wonderful program that we are trying to start at work, and I was meeting today, and it's called Little Van Gogh, where little babies 10 months to two will be doing artwork. And wow. that meeting was That's today. so precious. So I am so excited about so that. So that was your motivation or mojo? That was my motivation to go to work today. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the, the one thing that always motivates me to go to work is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Because Amen. without him, Amen. I would Amen. not want to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, and I'm hoping nobody on my, uh, at my job will listen to this because I may not have a job. <laughs> after this. But, you know, I, this is what I want to do is just do something for the Lord. So what motivates me, what my motivational mojo is for this year is to continuously do something that will please God. Amen. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. So, baby, what what, what are right now? Well, you know, one of the things we've got to, you know, talk about a little bit is about why is that something that would motivate you? Uh, Because, you know, we need you to contact us on Facebook so you can tell us. We're giving away movie tickets. And uh, y'all know how high movie tickets are now. Right. And so we're giving movie tickets out to anyone that calls. You cannot be a member of the family. Facebook us. Yeah, what did I say? Your, uh, Facebook us, your um, motivational right. mojo. And if we like it, we might read it. If we don't, you won't hear it. But if we <laughs> like it, we'll read it, and you might get some tickets yeah. to enjoy. And, and we're definitely not giving anything away to family members. Y'all don't even, don't even think about calling Man, us. Gotta I can't be somebody. afford to go to the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At least not an evening show, a matinee, but you're, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but so we want to know from you what motivates you, because one of the things we want to do this year is that we want to motivate you. We want to make you excited. We don't want to make you happy. We're, this is Let's Stay Together Talk. So we want to know from you what motivates you, what keeps you together, what keeps you grounded, what keeps you focused, what keeps you going. And if you can share that with us, then we can share it with someone else, and then we can just play it forward and start sharing certain things with everybody. And so that's one of the things we want to do. So go on Facebook, look for Let's Stay Together Talk. That's Let's Stay Together Talk. You'll see this cartoon figure of me and Brenda on there. And then when you get on the page, really? you'll see Tracy out there, too, <laughs> doing the camera. Put some information on Facebook and let us know. And at the end of this uh, program, we're also going to talk about uh, um, uh, Motivation Mojo, and we're going to call out the name of the person who won a ticket. Now, if you, do not ha- if you don't go on Facebook, you can also go on our uh, website, and it's uh, www.letsstaytogethertalk.com. Put your information out there, and then we can contact you. Two places that you can contact us. So your motivational mojo was what again? Oh, mine was to find my purpose in life and every day get closer and closer to my dream. I just heard it from God. He just told me, Brenda's purpose in life is to please her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you know we praying that is, tonight. That is, that is that is that is your motivation for the day. You're supposed to be pleasing your. Have I husband. not been pleasing, darling? Uh, I'm, let me, I'm gonna, darling, I'm waiting for the next. I'm waiting for the next thing to come. That it's been fuzzy. The translation is fuzzy mm, right now. Okay, okay. Ooh. So give us a, you know, give us a uh, Facebook and let us know what motivates you. And if you contact us about motivational mojo, and I thought you did an excellent job on that. A lot of times people do. They today. sit there and they uh, they do, uh, you know, uh, New Year's resolutions they and stuff like that. And before I'm the week is that. out, you know, mm-hmm. they're finished and they're not doing anything anymore. So we need to make sure that we motivate uh, each other. And uh, as uh, Sergeant Holmes is going to go finish his degree, congratulations mm-hmm. on that. Yes, sir. You know, it. we definitely want you to, to, to finish that up. <laughs> and so we, we uh, we're trying to get people to get more motivated about the things that they are doing. And so we're happy to uh, have you contact us about that information. Uh, Sergeant Holm, you said you had been uh, motivated on that. And we want to extend our condolences for you as well 
about the loss in your family. Uh, we thank you very much for being on the show today, thank you, sir. in spite of hearing that information. And I think we give you we had a card there yes, for you yes, uh, to appreciate you being out here. And uh, our as, first guest right. of the new year. All right. And I mean, this man didn't let nothing deter him. So yeah. I mean, I love it. Yeah. And so we 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 definitely thank you very much for being there, and we will uh, be praying for you and your thank family. You. Appreciate it. As you go for where are you gonna be going? I'm gonna be going to Mansfield, Ohio. Yeah, Mansfield, Ohio. So uh, safe travels. Safe uh, let's stay together, talk guests. Uh, let's pray for our brother as he goes uh, with his family uh, for the bereavement of the loss of your uh, was eldest it? brother. Eldest brother. So we we are we send our condolences to you, my brother. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate and so again, before we go to our next thing, I want you on to uh, motivational mojo. Send us something out on Facebook, and uh, once we get that information at the end of the show. We will uh, let you know who has won the tickets, and if it's a family member, we will not be giving it to you. Uh, so, I have divorced everybody in my family. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got another thing that we're doing because we've realized a lot of times, baby, that no one really knows who the McCains are. Right. We've been doing radio for two years, and people know us as a host. It does seem longer. Yeah. Like yeah. a marriage, it seems longer. <laughs> yeah. People know us as hosts of the um, Let's Stay Together talk show, but they don't know us. Right, so they don't really know anything about us at all, about how we get started, or they didn't even know how, you know, Tracy got into our lives, you know, uh, mm-hmm. how she kind of got in there unexpected, you know, tried to get rid of it, but she stayed around for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but we've got to talk a little bit about, you know, the, um, the McCain's. So we came up with this uh, new thing that we're going to call uh, Meet the McCain's. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens with Meet the McCain's is that we're going to start putting out videos uh, and a lot of information and audio and stuff about who we are so you can get a chance to understand uh, us as a couple, the 22, going on 22 years of marriage that you went through, and we're going to be real about it. Uh, if Lord you know anything Jesus. about us, we're going to be <laughs> real about everything that we we're gonna went through. We're going to need the sergeant to come yeah. over. Okay. <laughs> you know, I and still it, got them boxing gloves. All right, yeah. <laughs> and I lost that fight the last time. Yeah. I thought it was just it was too many females The sergeant around, said sergeant. women yeah. are stronger. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> women are stronger than numbers. I know that much. They was against me on the whole thing. You know. Yes, we were. It was about painting a room, but we ain't going to talk about that. Mm. But <laughs> one of the things we wanted to talk about with Meet the McCain's in the first segment is that we want to talk to tell people about who we are and how we got together. So, baby, you want to start off about, you know, the McCain's and how we met? Okay. We telling it the way it is. Tell the truth, girl. Um, I Tell was the 16. truth, shame the devil. He was 22. Uh-huh. His friend was dating my sister. He came over to my mom's house where we was living. I had a crush on him, and I said, you're going to be my husband one day. He looked at me and said, look, girl, please. No, that ain't what she said. You girl, you lying on the thing. I did say she you said be my to me, husband. she said to me that uh, I had a crush on I you. I said that. Okay, but you never said I was going to be your husband because oh, yes, I did. Now, now, now that I know she sixteen years old. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, <laughs> let me tell you something. At twenty two, <laughs> you I didn't hear that. You okay? wasn't trying to hear because okay. it would have been you would have been a pedophile. Yeah, sixteen, twenty two. Yeah, you know, six years older than me. Wow. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and for some reason, she loves to tell people that all He's the time. He's six years older. I'm six years <laughs> older than her, but I look six years younger. No, you Ooh. don't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Tip, tip, ting. I'll be on every day. <laughs> but what really actually happened was is that she came up to me, and she basically ran out the door, cute little girl at 16, and said, Hi, my name is Brendan. I, have a, I had a crush on you when you were in high school. And what I said was, I wish I would have known that in high school, playing around Aww. with her. And then it stopped. We, you know, we went our, our separate ways. And, and I was talking to the guy's name was Chuck. And I said, Chuck, who is, you know, who's that cute little girl? She's kind of cute. She said, that's uh, her sister, Renee's, uh, that's Renee's sister. I said, okay, fine. And so I was through with it after that. Cute little 16-year-old coming down, talking about she got a crush on me. Everybody had, no, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish everybody did have he a crush on me. He had a big afro back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish everybody did have a crush on me because I was kind of a shy guy back mm-hmm. then. But here's the thing that happened. Some about maybe uh, ten years, ten we years fast later, forward yeah. ten years. Ten years later, we see each other again, and uh, Brenda introduces herself to me, and she says, "Hi, I'm Vicky's cousin. You remember that? Mm-hmm. I remember that we was at a singles event at Salem Baptist Church. I was cute that day too. Went up to him, cute and every day, boy. I thought so, but you know, <laughs> apparently he didn't think so because he brushed me off. See, that was my version. That's, yeah, of that's it. her version of he, it. You she, brushed me she off. She said I brushed off because she introduced herself uh-huh. to me, but I didn't brush off. See, I, you know, 
at that point, I was dating someone else. And, and so, my date was with me. Okay, so it well, don't then, matter. So that, was, that shows your, your disrespect to your I date. I was trying to get rid of him. Uh-huh, wow. Ooh, I really was. Well, we, we must <laughs> be really <laughs> keeping it real. We're uh, keeping it real. You know, I'm, that, that, guy that, got, that guy that got rid of you, I'm hoping he, he probably said, yeah, I want to. Wait a minute. You said the oh, guy that got rid of me. Yeah, well. He, he, I got rid of him. Okay, well. Tell your story. What I heard was. This is my, <laughs> you don't know the guy. This is my truth. But what happened actually was is that when she came by, I, you know, I was a little, you know, shocked because I'm like, wow, this is an attractive young lady coming to talk to me. And so I didn't brush her off. I just was talking to someone else at the time and I wasn't going to, you know, you know, I, I don't play the field, right, you know. Right. So I, I, I've been, mama raised a good boy all of my life. And so when I said to her, I said, oh, I said, oh, okay, that's nice. I said, you know, you know, you know, nice to meet you, and blah blah blah. And so, I don't know. She must have thought every man to see her just gonna jump and say, "I want to date you," but not this brother. Right. <laughs> uh, I, that's a, you. You want to fast forward? This, this the same brother that cooked me a meal because the way to my heart is through my stomach. But you're moving too fast. Mm-hmm. But what <laughs> happened was at that point was, thank you, yeah, Alvin. Tell her to slow down. Do a slow train. You got to chew, chew, chew. <laughs> But what happened was at that point when I was with my friend, I told him, wow, this beautiful young lady was, was talking to me. And, uh, you know, I, and I, I really wanted to know who she was, but I was a little bit afraid at the time because she was attractive. I didn't want to talk to her. But, you know, I was talking to someone else, and I didn't want to, you know, be disrespectful. Right. So I just let it go by. So a lot of times you see somebody that you really like, but you let that situation pass. If it's the will of God, they'll come back into your life. Amen. And so I want to tell somebody out there that is listening right now, if the young man in your life or if the young lady in your life is supposed to be in your life, the will of God will bring them there. And if some reason, if you saw them before, God will bring that person back into your life that he feels that needs to be in your life. Because that's what happened to me. Brenda was at a, uh, uh, we was at a uh, Wednesday service, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you want to tell a part about why you were there? Uh, I was invited. I wasn't a member of the church yet, but I was invited there to go to Bible study. And I had just buried one of my closest friends, and I really didn't want to go to church or anything. But she said, girl, come on, just go and get your mind off everything. It's so funny how God put people back in each other's lives because I was in there grieving but trying to get the word. And Rick said that he's seen how my hair was laid on my yeah. face well, or something. Yeah. Basically what happened was is that she turned around to the side, and I just fell in love with her. I saw this beautiful young lady from the side, and I'm like, oh, my God, who is this beautiful young lady? And uh, then I was extremely afraid to go and speak to her, and uh, I spoke to her and talked to her for a little bit. And uh, the rest of the information you'll find out on the next episode of Meet the McCain. Meet the McCain. You'll find out what happened with the McCain after, after I met Brenda, and she turned around, and I say this, when she turned around, I instantly fell in love with this woman because she was a vision to me. And I fell in love with her. And then the man had to, after he fell in love with this young lady, he had to go there and say something to her that would make her want to give her his telephone number. And I know the other brothers out there, that's easy. Yeah, play the, play the game if you want to. But you know, brother, when you see somebody that you really like, you get a little nervous because you don't want that sister to turn you down. So you're going to find out what happened after that. Yeah, you know the end of the story. She's my wife. <laughs> you know, hey, so I have some game, right, right. but we're gonna find out. <laughs> we're gonna find out in, in the next part of it what happened when I had to go speak to Brenda because it wasn't an easy thing. It wasn't. <laughs> hey, we've got uh, an, we we got all new episodes that is coming up now. So what do we have next? We're gonna have heart to heart. So Alvin, play out that heart to heart for us. Hey, how you doing? This is Reverend Rick McCain. Let's have a heart to heart. It's 2016 and you're still not serious about your relationship. Are you going to string that young lady along forever? She's waiting for you to step up and make her your wife. And you're still trying to play the field. You know what you're doing is wrong, brother. She's your queen and you're treating her like a servant. If you're going to lay with her, 
then cleanse the sin off of you and her and make her your mate for life. Be the man that God has called you to be and honor her with your last name. You played the field for too long. This is the year you show your family and your friends that you are a real man ready to do the right thing for you and your woman. I once heard a friend say marriage ain't for punks, and I truly agree with that statement. It's the next step in a relationship where a man and a woman make a commitment to love each other for life, and that's a serious commitment to make marriage work. Man, you can do this. It's up to you to show that little girl and that little boy who's looking at you what a real man looks like. Are you ready to be a real man? Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Now, get on the phone and tell her this. Baby, this is the year I make you my wife. What? You're still standing here? Get on the phone, man. She's waiting for you. <laughs> All right. So that's heart to heart. It's just going to be a conversation that I have with individuals from the heart, just letting them know the things that they need to do. And this subject just came up at the new year is about men making the commitment to the, their women. There's a lot of women out there that are waiting for that man to make that commitment. You've been with her for too long. And now the only thing you're doing is you're, you're just sitting around. She wants a ring. She wants to be married. She wants to be your significant other. She wants to be the person that has your last name. But you're sitting around there constantly making her wait. There was somebody that was looking for a ring on Christmas, and all they got was a box, a box of something. But it wasn't what they were looking for. So I want to tell all the men out there that you need to step up and make the commitment and make sure that that young lady knows this year like I said, you've been stringing her along for too long. Let her know that this is the year that you're going to marry her and you're going to show all of your friends what a committed man looks like. It would be nice if that was to happen with our men out there. But sometimes I blame the women. I hate to say that because a woman knows. I mean, if the, a man knows in six months if he want to marry you. He'll string you along one year. But some women will hold on for two years. But when they get longer than that, it's like, baby, you're not going to get that ring. Let them go. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it might still happen, you know, with some guys. Because I know some guy just, I just met somebody got uh, married. Uh, it was a baseball player. His name was Chris Bryan. He was with this young lady for seven years, I think. And uh, they finally got married. Well, it so, depends on the age thing, too. Yeah, huh? I mean, he was younger. He was like 26 or something like that. But they were 21. And so, I mean, seven years is still a long time, you know. But what age does that work? What age does what work? I mean, you say seven years has been a long time, and, Lord, my daughter's going to kill me. But actually, think about it. You know, her son's father's been six years. Yeah. But so, see, they were in high school. Right. That's so a what happens when the girl starts out that young, and she says, oh, it's 10 years down the line. I'm 22, 23 years old. I'm ready to be married. What do you think about that? Well, I say this much that you have, you know, marriage is something you do as a commitment, you know, so you've got to be able to, to be committed to it. But you also have to look at are you, you know, and I know some people are not going to like this, but at a young age, you need to make sure that you're you're uh, ready in all cases. And so that's one of the things that you've got to, you have to know what to do is that you have to be committed in all, you know, committed, you know, financially, educationally. Are you, you know, in high school, if you're in college, and you're trying to finish college, finish that up, you know, yeah. you know, make a plan is basically what I'm saying is make a plan for how you want to go through this process. But this should be the year that you make that plan and say, hey, this year we're going to get married in 2017. We're going to get married in 2018 and start making plans of how you're going to save for that and what you're going to do for that. Now, obviously, if you're 18 years old, you know, you need to slow down and uh, get your, your life together, get college Get your, your education career together, going career going, and things of that nature. But I'm not saying that at 18 you can't get married because there's been some successful marriages at 18. But I'm basically saying is that make sure that you make a commitment this year to that young lady that you care about, that you're going to make sure that everybody knows that she's your number one 
and you're moving forward in that direction. You know, Reverend, I, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, I was the perfect example. I got married at 22, and I'm still with my wife for mm-hmm. 33 years. Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. I just wanted to give a shout out to her. Hey, That's baby. right. Hey, hey, hey wifey. Yeah. <laughs> it's Linda Holmes. Her uh, name I, Linda? Yeah. Hey, Linda, girl. Hey, Linda. <laughs> we be all happy when it's <laughs> years up there like, woo, we can make this marriage work. I mean, it's a beautiful thing if it can, if somebody mm-hmm. got the band, right? Yeah, so that's right. basically what we're trying to do in Heart to Heart is just get you to understand that this is the year that you should do what's right, and we're going to have a lot of different Heart to Hearts that's coming up. Hey, Alvin, real quick, play that Inspirational Corner for us. We've got a new thing called Inspirational Corner as well. It's a new year, and some it mean new beginnings, a chance to start over and get it right, and to others it mean another year has crept up on them and they still haven't gotten it right. Whatever the new year means to you, rest assured it will be whatever you make it. It's easy to give up when life has thrown you a curveball and you feel as though nothing is going right in your life. That's what Satan wants you to believe. But Proverbs 29:18 says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. What is your vision for the year? Stop looking back to the past and start looking forward to your future. I want to encourage you to find your direction in life and develop the strongest muscle you have, your mind. Too many of us merely exist because we've settled for less than God has intended us to have. I, myself, fell in this category for years and became the star at my own pity party. So stop existing and live. Do something you've never done before. Start by writing a list of the areas where you want to grow this year. You see, the quality of your life will be determined by your vision and the effort you're willing to put in it to fulfill it. Your best year ever starts now, right now. Get my zone. All right. This is Inspirational Corner. It's another thing that we're doing right now is Inspirational Corner as well. And so we're just doing some things different here on the Let's Stay Together show. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Inspirational Corner and what it means uh, to you and what we're going to be doing. Okay, then. Well, that Inspirational Corner here is more of a devotional thing to give you some inspiration and to not give up on whatever you're dreaming on doing or whatever you want to do. Just going to have hope. We're going to give you devotional time and scriptures to let you know that we're all in this together. Whatever is going on to um, inspire you for the week that day, that's what we need to do to get you going to do it. All right, you just heard Inspirational Corner. What's coming next is that we're going to have Making Marriage Work with David Steele will be on the line. So you're going to really look forward to uh, hearing from David. He's an excellent person, loves marriage, and helps people out all over the world. So stay tuned for Let's Stay Together Talk. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks. Hello, this is Newsbreak with Rick McCain. Police use a force guidelines getting overhaul. Mayor Rahm Emanuel has promised a major overhaul of the Chicago Police Department use of force policies. But what are they now? It's a series of guidelines that indicates when, why, and how police should apply force in the field. The goal is to gain control of potential dangerous situation 
with reasonable and proportional action. Anita Alvarez requests FBI assistance for latest police shooting. Cook County State's Attorney Anita Alvarez is seeking FBI help to investigate the December 26 police shooting that killed two people. Officers were called to a West Garfield Park home on the 26th after Quintano Legria's father reported to 911 that his son was trying to attack him with a baseball bat. Responding officers fatally shot Legria, 19, and downstairs neighbor Betty Jones, 55. Police admitted Jones was accidentally struck and tragically killed. Woman's body found in suitcase in Roseland. A woman's body was discovered stuffed inside a suitcase found in an alley in Roseland on Sunday. A red suitcase was found in the alley of the 300 block of 115th Street next to a trash can around 2 p.m. Neighbors' children discovered the suitcase and first thought nothing about it until one of the teenagers decided to open it. Police were not going to release any information about the young lady found in his suitcase until the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office did an autopsy. However, today we find out that the young lady has been identified as a 21-year-old Dominique Ferguson. She lived on the 400 block of 125th Street. Authorities say they are still trying to figure out how Ferguson died. This has been Newsbreak with Rick McKenna. UrbanBroadcastMedia.com Chicago and around the world where your voice is heard. This is UBM Talk. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together Talk Show. All right, welcome back to the Let's Stay Together Show. How you doing over there, baby? I'm doing good, and thank you for listening and staying with us on the second hour on the McCain train. Yeah, so we're going to go to a new segment that we have called Making Marriage Work. And this segment is basically just talking about marriage and have some people come on there and try to help you with situations in your marriage so you can make it work. Me and Brenda will also be doing a booklet on this soon uh, to help people with their marriages and go hopefully with God's uh, will, go around the world teaching people about making marriage work and use our 21 years of marriage to help Uh, stimulate marriages that are in trouble or just help marriages that are going great and give them just that little boost to go forward. But what we're going to do today is talk to a a gentleman who is already doing some great things like that. And his name is David Steele. David, are you there? Hi, Rick. Hi, Brenda. Thank you for having me today. Hey, David. And thank you for joining us again on our show. (coughs) Oh, yeah, we, uh, we had an interview uh, back in March. Uh, thanks for having me back. Oh, we, we're delighted to have you back on the show to do a follow-up because we know we have a lot of things to ask you about radical marriage. Yeah, juicy topic. Where do you want to start? <laughs> okay, let's get right on into it then, Mr. David. I'm loving it. So how did this all begin for you? Well, he, well. He, you know, you know my history. I'm a marriage and family therapist. I fell in love with coaching. I became a relationship coach. I founded Relationship Coaching Institute. I've, I've been in the relationship field since 1978. I'm passionate about relationships. I'm passionate about marriage. I got divorced twice myself, uh, trying to get it right. Oh, aren't we all? <laughs> we all trying to get it right. Personally and professionally, it's been a long, hard, hard road. Uh, but... When I was around 50 years old, I finally found my soulmate, and we got married, and we're now finally living happily ever after. And so the other side of the horizon, you know, the, the happily ever after, the what is a good marriage, what does a great marriage look like, you know, I finally got to experience for, my, for myself. And so that's when the whole radical marriage idea came about, because, you know, my wife, she was married for 24 years as well. So between us, we have like 50 years of marriage experience, and we want a great life together. We want a great relationship together. We don't just want ordinary. We don't want boring. You know, we, we want to have our life be an adventure together. And so that's really the genesis of radical marriage. We started playing around and experimenting and taking some of the things that I've developed for relationship coaching and applying it to our own relationship. I have and developing a, some new stuff. I have a uh, question for you, David. I have a question for you. Um, can you tell us how the average marriage is challenged today? Well, I, I tell you, 
uh, there's a lot of confusion about commitment, for one, uh, and we don't seem to do commitment very well anymore, and to the point where 40% of adults in the U.S. say that they believe marriage is becoming a <laughs> And to me, that's scary. Yes. And, you know, people, they, they don't really date anymore. They kind of hook up, and then they move in together and live together. Uh, and then when you ask them, you know, hey, are you guys committed? They all say, 100% of people <laughs> I should say, oh yeah, we're real committed. So the, the whole idea of commitment and marriage and how to make it work, it's really confusing and in trouble nowadays. It's all in flux. But what's clear to me, what, came, what was coming from all of that, is that we need a next evolution of marriage. So marriage, you know, nobody wants to do it the way it was in the past. Nobody wants you know, arranged marriages. Nobody wants boring marriages. Nobody wants to get divorced. So there needs to be a new model, a new evolution of marriage, and you know, one that's based on, on today's values. And what do we value today? We value being happy and, and having meaning and, and being fulfilled and you know, making a difference in the world. And uh, you know, certainly we value family and we value commitment and some of that old stuff. But we also, you know, we, we, we value being progressive. We value having an exciting, fun, adventurous life. And so we need to do both of it. We need comfort and security, and we need excitement. Yeah, so, you know, David, one of the things about it, you say a radical marriage, because a lot of times people out there, they want the excitement. They want something radical. How do we bring that into our marriage to make it exciting all the time? Because I love the topic, radical marriage, but what do we need to do as a couple to be as radical as we were in our marriage as we were when we were dating? Well, I tell you, I, I, you know, uh, Darlene and I wrote a whole book about that, about that which is Radical Marriage, and there are uh, six elements of Radical Marriage, and it starts with Radical Commitment, and then Radical Communication, and Radical Romance, and Radical Sex, and Radical Living, <laughs> and so I think a, a short answer to your question, uh, let's talk about the idea of, of a comfort level that we are wired for comfort and security. We want to be comfortable. But we get bored with that after a while. It feels suffocating after a while. So then we need to, to go out and, and have some excitement. So radical marriage is about leaving your comfort level with your partner. And, and here's one example, radical intimacy. You know, uh, couples that... You, well, you see them in restaurants, and they're eating dinner together, and they're not even looking at each other. They're yeah. not even really talking to each other. You know, it's like they have no intimacy. They have no connection anymore. Uh, that is really, really sad. And intimacy can be exciting and adventurous. But how do you make closeness and intimacy exciting and adventurous? You leave your comfort level. How do you do that? Well, part of it is you tell your partner everything that's going on inside you. Your, your deepest, most secret desires and fantasies and, uh, you know, thoughts, and even the ones that you don't want to admit to yourself, the things that you're ashamed of, of even thinking. You know, you share with your partner everything. And, you know, that can be scary. Yeah, that can be scary, Dave, because some people, uh, I can see them saying, I don't want them to know everything that I'm thinking because if they do, they, they may not, you know, respect or like me. Is that some of the things that you experienced when you were you know, teaching some of this information? Oh, yeah, you know, but the, the thing here is that you have two ways to go. You can censor yourself to avoid judgment, avoid rejection, stay in your comfort level. You can censor yourself to stay safe, or you can let it all hang out with your partner. That seems to be the choice, one or the other. It's really hard to do both. There's no fine line there where you can be, you know, radically intimate and share with your partner everything about you and let your partner totally inside you and stay safe. It just doesn't work that way. So with a radical marriage, it's you have such a trust level. You have built up this level of safety where you can tell each other anything and it's safe and it's okay. And that is a wonderful feeling, by the way. I'm, I'm sure after 21 years, you guys have achieved a level of safety. Oh, yeah. That you could be 
you can tell each other your deepest, darkest fantasies, desires, and secrets uh, and feel like you're not going to be criticized or rejected because of it. Hey, we've got a question for you, but I'm just going to say this, David, and I'm going to you know, say one of the things that I found that was really refreshing, this is going to sound crazy to some people, is that a radical thing for us, and I think a lot of people don't do this, we felt so free with each other that even – passing gas <laughs> was like funny to us, you know, because like you, you would not do that in front of anybody. But when you have such of a secure relationship with each other, it's not something that you worry about. You're not judging each other anymore. So that kind of passing gas was almost like passing the flame or passing the oh insecurities, <laughs> the insecurities of a relationship. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but that's what, that's what <laughs> the things I thought about is that I've been able to pass on a being worried about what she thinks or what <laughs> what uh, she what she would think about me or what I would think about her. Exactly. <laughs> That's and, radical. Uh, it's the kind of relationship that everybody wants. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved and accepted for who they are. Everybody wants to feel safe. And everybody wants an exciting, romantic, you know, sex life and an intimate relationship. But you can't get that by staying safe and by censoring yourself and by staying comfortable in a relationship. It's, you know, it, it really, it, it, it's, it, there's an amazing principle that really uh, hit home for me about all this, which is, you know, we all strive for a good relationship. And I really got it that in today's world, good is not good enough. Yes. Good can become suffocating. Good can become boring. And, you know, so we need more than just good. And so how do you do that? You're pushing the envelope always. You're putting a little effort into your relationship always. You're taking a little risk every day with your partner. Hey, every Dave. Day, we, you know, a little risk. It doesn't have to be big risk. Yeah, Dave, we've got, we've, got some, is deadly. we've got some Facebook people that have got a question for you. We're going to have our, our uh, coordinator over here, Tracy uh, Howard, uh, ask you a question. Hey, David, it's Tracy. How are you? Um, I just had a question because we've got some really skeptical people out here, and they are asking, when you talk about security, are you talking about um, financially? And also someone's asking, when you suppose you have an argument about something that you were just thinking about and you're not really doing it, um, how do you guys handle that without it turning into a big deal? Well, you know, uh one of the one of the uh, wonderful things about radical marriage and about you know really being absolutely safe with each other is that we assume we always assume the best. We always assume that we're doing the best we can. We accept each other one hundred percent for who we are. And when there are issues, a problem, a need that's not being met, uh, we have an issue of some kind. We own that one hundred percent. It's not my partner's fault that I am stressed out about money. I'm creating my own stress from inside myself. I take responsibility for it. And I need to be a good teammate with my partner and work out our financial situation. So part of radical marriage is you take 100% responsibility for your own experience and you work with your partner to get your needs met. And we have some tools in radical marriage to help you do that. The communication map is uh, a communication tool for expressing your needs and expressing issues or problems that you're experiencing in a very positive, productive way. And the relationship journal is a journaling process that you do with your partner to kind of kind of dig deep inside yourself of what's going on for you and, and write it down on paper. And then your partner does the same thing. And then you swap. And then you read each other's entry and you talk about what's going on for, for you and what's going on for your partner at a level of intimacy that it's really hard to just sit down and talk about. So it's those kinds of strategies and those kinds of tools and those kinds of principles or concepts that if we are taking 100% responsibility for our experience. Now, what is your experience? Your experience is everything inside you, your thoughts, your feelings, your physical sensations, your judgment, everything inside you. And the minute we blame our partner for it, like, you make me so angry, or how could you spend all that money? Now we can't pay our bills. You are such a jerk. 
you know, all these <laughs> judgments and, and the way we feel when we acted out on our partner, our relationship doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. David, I have a question for you. I want to piggyback off of um, some of the things that we were just talking about. Let's go deeper with the do some radical things here. But what are some baby steps a couple can take if they're not comfortable saying what you just mentioned before they tackle all those deep issues? You know, like Rick was teasing us, saying something about passing gas. You're comfortable with that. But how can a couple get comfortable in even talking to each other? Because, I mean, when you say share everything, it's kind of hard for some couple to share anything. Right. And I think one of the best tools, I mean, I call it my favorite relationship tool uh, in the world. Uh, it's, it's the relationship journal. And so that's where, you know, you can write out your thoughts. You can write out the things you want to talk about, uh, talk to your partner about. Uh, you can write out the things that are hard for you to express verbally. And, uh, and, and get together and talk about it. And I, I love the idea uh, of a radical marriage retreat. And the main, the main tool that you would use in a radical marriage retreat is the relationship journal. And I've done, I've done this myself in a, in a previous marriage where, you know, we were able to talk about things that were really, really hard to talk about. Otherwise, when we're able to journal about them first and then share what was in our journal. And if you take an entire day or an entire weekend and have a relationship retreat and do that, that's a great way to get started. And then you continue doing that. You build it into your routines and you create rituals around it. And that's a lot of the secret of, of any great relationship is routines and rituals. So, David, and, let me ask you this question. How do I get a chance to be a part of the Radical Retreat? Is there a Radical Retreat? And if so, how do I get a chance to be a part of it? Well, there's two kinds of, of Radical Marriage Retreats. Uh, the first is having one that is professionally led, whether it's a group retreat or it's a private retreat that is professionally led for you. The second is you can have a self-guided retreat. You can take the Radical Marriage book, and simply follow the steps and go off for the weekend and have your own little private, self-guided radical marriage retreat. You know, the thing about radical marriage is it, it, it really, it's for functional couples. It's not really for, for couples in trouble. Uh, you know, couples in trouble are not ready for this. Yeah. And it, if you're a functional couple, then you can go off for a weekend, take the radical marriage book and do very well. And if you want to get to the next level, then hire yourself a, a relationship coach, a radical marriage coach and have them guide you and lead you through it. Sometimes, you know, to, to stretch and to get beyond our, our own limits, we need some extra help. And so that's what a coach is for. So, but David... For, for couples that are in trouble, they need to focus on the basics. Right. And, and radical marriage starts with the basics, assumes that is all in place, and it's about getting to the next level. Yeah. So, David, uh, tell me, who wrote this book, and how can you get it? Well, Darlene and I wrote it, <laughs> and, and what's funny is that uh, it, it arose out of our own web TV show, kind of like you guys, are, you, you guys have a radio show together, Yeah. and chances are you talk about a lot of things, a lot of ideas come up. Well, same with us. We were doing this web TV show called Let's Get Real, and <laughs> all sorts of, you know, people were writing in, and we would address their, their questions and problems, uh, you know, on a web TV show, and... You know, we developed this great material. And so, you know, we should put this in a book. And we, there's things we were doing in our own relationship that, you know, we wanted to share as well. And so, so that's, that was how the book came together. I could not have written this book by myself. Yeah. So you, you know, and I'm your wife... I'm a writer in my profession. I'm a pioneer in my profession. I've written many books. This is not a book I couldn't have written by myself at all. You know? And so Darlene and I wrote it together. Called Radical Marriage. You can check it out on Amazon or at RadicalMarriage.com. Okay. And I hear if they do check it out on Amazon, they can receive the first three chapters for free? Yeah. Go to RadicalMarriage.com and, and you can download the first three chapters for free. It's, it's inspirational. And the first three chapters will definitely tell you if this is for you or not. And it's, you know, it, there's no judgment for me. You know, it's, I, I admit it's not for everybody. And some people read, like, the five promises of radical commitment, and they just fall in love with them and say, oh, I want a relationship like that. 
And other people, you know, take a look at that and say, oh, man, I could never do that in a million years. No, yeah. that's not for me. So and, it's, it's you know, saying, either way, it's okay. It's radical it, marriage is not for everybody. David, quick question. As, as a single woman, is this a book that you would suggest reading before you get married? Uh, I'm sorry, which question? As being a single woman, let's say I wanted to get married again, would this be a book you would suggest reading before you got married? Uh, well, yeah, but you know what? Um, I love the idea uh, because years and years ago when I founded Relationship Coaching Institute and I was designing a coaching program for singles, I had the epiphany, singles become couples. And that's, you know, that's where we all start when we're single. And, and we really determine the fate of our relationship the minute we choose a partner. And so wouldn't it be great to be inspired by radical marriage and say, yeah, I want a marriage like that. And then you go ahead and when you're single, you find somebody who you can have a marriage like that with. And I have a name for that. I call it radical dating. <laughs> Radical yeah. dating. <laughs> hey, David, we are, we appreciate you giving us a call in again. Tell me uh, again about yourself, this book, and uh, how someone can get in contact with you and purchase the book. Well, the, the book is Radical, uh, Radical Marriage, Your Relationship as the Greatest Adventure. The website for the book is RadicalMarriage.com, and go ahead and you can download the first three chapters there. It's also available on Amazon. It's available as an ebook and for the Kindle. And for myself, you know, I'm the founder of Relationship Coaching Institute. What we do is we train relationship coaches. And if you want to be a radical marriage coach or you want to work with couples or with singles, go to relationshipcoachinginstitute.com. All right. Hey, David, uh, I appreciate you giving us a call today because I think something very special is going on today. What is that? <laughs> well, well, thank you, Rick. <laughs> Today is the 18th birthday of my youngest. I have twin sons. Aww. Their names are Victor and Eric. They are turning 18 today. So I am officially no longer parenting children. All my kids are <laughs> <laughs> well, happy that, that radical marriage is really going to start now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, David, we are, I'm not going to keep you on the phone for long. I really appreciate you giving us a telephone call and sharing with us. I want to just ask you one more thing. Is there anything else on marriage that you've written or you'd like to share with someone before you go? Well, I tell you, I do have another website called coupleforlife.com. And you go there, and there's a, a bunch of free as, assessments and quizzes for, for couples on there. Uh, and so if you're a couple, you want to take a look at your relationship, and you want to do some work on it, that would be a great place to start at whatever level you are. Go to coupleforlife.com. Hey, that's great. Hey, David, thanks again for calling Let's Stay Together Talk. Uh, I know we can count on you again if we need some marriage information. Uh, you're an excellent person, and uh, we appreciate all the information that you share on our show. Well, thanks, guys. I love you guys, and ask me. I will happy, be happy to come back anytime. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Hey. Right, bye. hey, so that was uh, David Steele on the show. Dave is a great guy, isn't he? He is. As you know, take, today, both of our guests have been really great, you know, taking time out of their busy schedule. Yeah. And deaths in the family. I'm like, we could count on some good people. And that's the, that's just the blessing of God on your life when you have someone who has a law so in the family, but yet they're still dedicated to come. We thank uh, Sergeant Holmes for doing that. And also, David, I know he was struggling with uh, for his two sons because he really wanted to make sure that he got there on time for uh, their uh, celebration for the uh, two sons that are turning 18 years old. Not as much traumatic as a joyous situation, but both of them are important in situations within themselves. So we do thank both of our guests for coming on. You did learn a little bit about information about having a radical marriage. That's something you should always want to have is something that's radical because I think when we're when single, we want to be we're radical in love. But when we get married, it's mm-hmm. just we just like lose that that as that song says, you've lost that loving yeah, feeling. Yeah, the fire and burnt out. Right. And so David's left us with a lot of information. Even for singles, you have something you can go on there. And we're going to try to see. We've got a lot of other questions we have for David. I'm going to see if I can uh, send it over to him or do another interview with him again and have him answer all the questions we have on there. And so we can put it on our website so people can find more information about uh, David's radical marriage and how they can get a part of that. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that 
he did um, express that this is not for marriages that are truly broken or about to separate. Right. You it sort of seemed like you have a good pace of a marriage going. You want to make it greater and take it to the next level. Because when you think of the word radical, you think of something extreme. What can we do to make our marriage radical, Rick? Yeah, and I like that because you know you want to do something that's going to keep that marriage exciting. And a lot of times people just, they, they, they don't think of things anymore. Mm, they take each other for granted. Yeah, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm looking at David's website, the couplefourlife.com um, one, and you guys should go to it. You know, just one thing I want to mention real quick. Um, becoming a couple for life means you accept responsibility for your outcomes. You are the pioneer of your life together. You strive to make choices and commitments consist- consciously. You develop effective relationship strategies, make effective relationship choices, acquire effective relationship tools, and learn effective relationship skills. You realize that you don't know what you don't know, and you are open to learning. And finally, realize that no one is successful alone and are open to support. Wow. I see that. One of the things about it is effective. And it's, thanks, Tracy, for bringing it up. Uh, you, you've got to be able to go there. What's that website again? Um, couple for li- couplesforlife.com. Yeah, that's definitely something you want to do if you're in a couple. couple relationship and that you're trying to get to be a radical marriage. This is something you want to start with. We've got a lot of questions out there to help you with, you know, kind of figuring out what you want, you know, for your relationship so you can get your motivational mojo on mm-hmm. as well. Speaking of, I uh, still have those movie tickets. Somebody want to send us one of their motivational I'm mojo? I'm still get watching. Started. Right. We haven't got any motivation. So now, we don't mind not giving away any tickets. Right. but mm-hmm. okay. We can save them and give it to someone else. But if you can or call. go. Yeah, or go ourselves. <laughs> so if, if you can, a lot of movies um, I want to see. Check us out on Facebook or go to our website, www. Uh, let's stay together talk.com and uh, let us know what motivates you. We'll uh, get some information for you and send that ticket. So uh, it's got to be before the show is over because if the show is over, we will not be contacting you. Hey, I'm going to take you, I'm giving you a train schedule, our train schedule right now, January the 16th, 2016. Praise Production presents Generation Black at 7 p.m. I'll come back with more with that. Right, with the Celeste Stay Together talk, we'll be right back after these commercial breaks. Thanks you for listening. This is Reverend Rick McCain. The Let's Stay Together talk show is a Christian show that seeks to bring the loss to Christ through discussing relationships that can be taboo to the church. Within these conversations, we seek to bring you into a closer relationship with Christ, where our desire is to teach and tell you that God loves you and will never leave you nor forsake you. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can do that now by repeating these words. Jesus I believe that you've died for my sins and that by acknowledging that you are God's chosen vessel that died on the cross for the remission of sins, my sins are forgiven. Tonight, I accept you as my Lord and Savior and I will live my life according to your will. By saying these words, you are now a child of God. It may not seem or feel like anything has changed, but you have now just transformed the eternity of your life. The Spirit of God is now a part of you and will lead you in the ways of the Lord. Your next step should be to find a church with a solid foundation of teaching God's Word, where you can learn more about this new life with Christ from other Christians. Welcome to the family of believers. And remember, God loves you. And so does the Let's Stay Together talk show. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Yeah, there was something else. 
All right, all right. Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together show. Thank you for listening. We're still waiting for that motivational mojo person to win those tickets. I so haven't got it yet. You better call. You know you want to take it. Man, I said I had a heart to heart. You can you can let her know you want to be your wife at the movie. And you can go <laughs> see Star Wars with her or something like that. Ooh. <laughs> that's true well i guess if you like that type of thing and baby we're about to do the um the leave it in the car right now no you're gonna go back with your announcements you yeah. see yeah. oh yes yeah. yes yes i do want to check because check you back to mccain train schedule january the 16th praise production presents generation black an america renaissance at the harris theater at millennium park at 7 p.m Visit harristheaterchicago.org. Come witness the experience of a lifetime. And that's Martin Luther King weekend, so you need to be there. And also, I'm moving fast forward here. Election date, March 15, 2016. Elect D. Renee Jackson for Circuit Court of Cook County Judge for the Second Judicial Sub-Circuit. To learn more about Attorney D. Renee Jackson, visit www.elect D. Renee Jackson for the number four judge.org. All right. Hey, we've got another segment on the new things that we're going to be doing with Let's Stay Together Talk, and it's called Leave It in the Car. So, Alvin, play that for me, please. Hey, baby, did you remember to call the man at the auto place and set up an appointment for him to check the car? Darn it, I forgot. Sorry, baby. I'll call him tomorrow. Oh, come on. You know I told you that had to be done today. Isn't that another appointment until two weeks from now? Ah, how is it that you always remember how to do things for other people, but you always forget me? Please, are you serious with all the things I'm already doing? You would think you would be the man to handle this yourself. Wow, a man, huh? Those pretty harsh words. Why does it always have to be something about me being a man? I just asked you to make a phone call. Wow, we will get caught by a train. Yeah, I just wish all those darn horns would stop blowing. I'm sorry, baby. It's been a hard day, and your words just sent me over the edge. Yeah, you know what? My words was a little bit harsh, and I didn't think about you and your day. I'm sorry. You still want me to call tomorrow? Yeah, sure. It's just a checkup. Maybe I should probably think about starting a conversation a little bit better. (laughs) Yes, you should, and I could work on my reply. Let's Let's just just leave leave it in the car. Okay, baby. I love you. I love you, too. (laughs) You really love me, baby. I do love you, baby. I love you very much. You know what? Let's let's, uh, leave it in the car. It's basically an example of sometimes when people are going places, they get a little bit frustrated and get angry. And you don't want to bring that uh, into your home, into your environment, into where you live at. And so... We are doing some skits uh, basically about what we talk about to each other and that we found the place that we should leave it at and not let it destroy our relationship. And this was just an example of what something we had where uh, Brenda was supposed to take something in uh, for a checkup for the car and she forgot. And I got a little bit upset that the fact that you forgot it. Yeah, and all that negative energy came out. And that's something, like we said, you want to leave it in the car. You want to leave it there because I always used to tell Rick, the way you act towards me make me react towards you. If you come to me negative, I'm coming back to you negative. And that's not the radical marriage we want you guys to have. We want you to have a great marriage. But in between that, we made a pact and said, you know, some stuff we have to pick our battles. That's yeah. not worth fighting over. The car, the oil, or whatever, it gets changed. When it gets changed, it gets done. When it gets done. Right, because, you know, it's, it's a car. I mean, you, you want to do it before the car actually breaks down. But you don't want to get to a point where you're, you're, you're making the situation bigger than what it is. And what we're trying to do in this aspect is just let you know that things that you're going to argue about, if you actually just sit back and relax and breathe, you might be able to find out that that situation is not as big as it might be. And one of the things that God had said to me when I w- we were doing this one time, I was sitting in the house, God had said to me something that was very special. He said, you know, Rick, there, there might be some times where you might have to do something over and over again, it's constantly. You might want your spouse to do it, and they may never do it. The question is, is it more important that it gets done, or is it more important of who does it? Because if that doesn't get done by that individual, are you going to allow that to destroy your relationship, 
Or are you going to say that the power to get something done in your relationship relies on you and that you want to make sure that that relationship survives so you continuously do it no matter what happens and not try to push it off on someone else. If it needs to be done, do it. And don't look for someone else to sit there and say, uh, I do this all the time. You, you, you should do something. What we should do is just take ownership that the relationship has to survive so it matters. It doesn't matter who does it as long as it gets done so the relationship is not destroyed by a small issue becoming too large because we're more concerned about who does it than actually getting it done. That's really um, some great advice, but that's also for mature couples. Yeah. Because when you're a babe, like you said, a babe in Christ, a babe in a marriage, you're, you're not accountable. You hold the other person accountable for your actions or why they didn't do something or you play the blame game. So I really do say that does take some maturity. And I'm not talking about age-wise. I'm talking about really some biblical matureness and growing your marriage. Yeah, it really does. And, and, the, and the thing about it is, is that you've got to get there. I mean, you're going to make some mistakes. Uh, for those of you all listening to us, realize you're going to make some mistakes. Don't get angry about the fact that you've made some mistakes. We've been married for 21 going on 22 years. We've made hundreds of mistakes. Thousands. We've made a lot of mistakes in that. Mistakes are going to happen. But the thing about it is, is that what you do after the mistake, do you allow the mistake to destroy you or do you learn from the mistake and move forward? And that's what we're trying to get you to understand is that it doesn't matter that she didn't take the car to the place. And that's what I always tell some of the young women that I talk to. Pick your battles. Pick your battles because you're not just trying to win that you want to win the war and it shouldn't even be that. I mean – the thing that gets me with Rick and myself, in the beginning, we was going at it, wasn't we, baby? Yeah. As a, back yeah. and forth, back and forth. I blamed him. He blamed me. We was playing the blame game so tough. It was like, well, who who won this battle? We don't even know. And then it's sad when you don't even know what we're arguing about. Right. And, you know, and it got to a point where uh, the love in our relationship was more important than the battles or who won the battles. Because we start recognizing one thing that I want everyone out there to listen to, to understand. Your love should conquer all and not allow a situation. There's going to be some difficult situations going to go through as well. But how do you handle that? The smaller situations will help you deal with the larger ones because you've mounted up a small army of wins. And now when that big situation comes, you can handle it. But if you if you if you're fighting about all the time small things and you never resolve that, when that big issue comes, you'll never finish it. And I'll give an example real quick. Uh, a, a young man I used to know when I was a uh, dating long, 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 long ago. Uh, he's me, he was saying, me and my girlfriend, we never have an we never have an argument. You and your oh, girlfriend yeah. argue all the time. And I said, but we're still together. His him and his girlfriend had an argument one time and they broke up because they were trying so hard not to argue each other when that one argument came it was a build up of many small things that caused a big problem because they never wanted to deal with the small one and get small victories so they can deal with the large one to get a larger victory and that's not healthy in any relationship to not argue because I always tell people it's healthy to express your feelings, to get your thoughts out. Don't wait until the end when you start resenting a person. And another side of that is controlling if you can't express how you really feel to the one you love because you're so afraid it's going to start an argument. Start an argument. That's when you get to know that person, how they handle a situation. Because we know each other well, don't we, babe? Yeah, and, we do. And, and, it, and it gives you a reason to make up, too. But actually, <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, I mean, I, and what used to bother me so much in relationships is when you argue and you can't leave it, you know, it's done. I hate when someone argues and you continuously bring it up over and over at the you next time. You can leave argument. it in a car, just yeah. leave there it. There you go. Yeah, right. so that that's, yeah, and it, it, I, I, I think arguments are healthy. 
Yeah, and th- th- they can be very healthy. As long as they ain't hitting each other. Right, yeah. and, <laughs> right don't hit below the belt. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it can be very healthy if you can find a solution. And so what we want you to do, and, and we're going to have a lot of segments of leaving in the car, and we're going to talk about certain things that we're going to have an issue with, but yet at the end we realize that that issue is not more important than our love. Yes, it is. That issue is not more important than what we have for each other. And and speaking of relationships. And speaking (laughs) of that, I have a letter for you right here. It says, Dear LSTT. Do you want me to read that? Yeah, so what is it? Yeah, it's an LST relationship relationship letter. letter. Yeah. Okay, well, what is the relationship letter? Relationship letters come from you, our listeners. You either inbox me on Facebook or you text me a subject you want to talk about or you might even put it on our website. And so we don't reveal the name, but this is the letter that we received. Dear LSTT, help. It's a new year and I didn't receive the gift that I wanted from my boyfriend for Christmas again. My family and friends straight out told me to dump him and keep it moving. Dump him. <laughs> but I don't have the heart to do that because I love him. He's a good guy, and we have been dating for four years. But I am 36 years old. I would like to be married and start a family before I turn 40. Every year he says I am the one he wants for his wife and the person he wants to bear his children. But instead of the ring this year, I got a diamond necklace. Don't get me wrong, it was beautiful, but the minute I saw the box, my heart dropped with disappointment because it was too big to be a ring box. Should I move forward in the future without him or keep hope alive? Sincerely, highly disappointed. Wow, that's interesting that that uh, person would uh, would write that. And uh, I've got two ladies in uh, the room here first, so... I'm going to see what they're going to say about that. Tracy, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that. And like I say, women, diamonds are great no matter what size box they come into. But I, t- I totally um, understand how you feel after so long. You are, you know, waiting for someone to marry you. But the thing for me this year is, like you say, you know, your new year, new me. I would actually just let him know how you're feeling, you know, just be honest with him. And say, hey, you know, I really expected us to be moving a little forward, you know, at this point in time. Let's talk about it. Because I think that as long as you talking to us and not to him, he's not going to know how you feel. Hmm. Tracy's sweet. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Uh, yeah, you're you're sweet because I'm leaving it in the car. You leaving it in the car. But see, in this case, you don't want to leave funny. it in the car. <laughs> now, That's good. Only thing I can say with this, um, highly disappointed, you know in your heart what you want to do. And, of course, you know you want to make this man your husband. You want to carry his last name and be his wife. Now, depending on the age, like we was talking about earlier, if if they dated in high school, they're young, and they've been, you know, dating four or five years, and they're moving on with their um, education. So, yeah, you're pushing on years. But let's just say the scenario, she told us her age. Well, she said she was older, right? Right. She's 36. Her time is limited in her mind because she want to be married and raise kids. You're wasting time. And I'm not trying to be harsh, but you seem like a woman who have goals and standards in your mindset of what you want to do. You're 36. You've been dating someone for four years, so you was 32. We Women give men the benefit of the doubt. We wait for them. We try to wait for them to get their lives together. But if it was the other way around, which it might end up being this because I've seen it happen a lot of times. A man would dump this woman he'd been dating for years, and in a year and a half, you see he married with somebody else, and she's pregnant. So it's like if you know what you want, stick to your goals. I'm not saying family members was super right about dump them, dump them, but follow your heart in it. And as the sweetness of Tracy said, talk to him, let him know. But believe me, I don't think that this conversation has not been said because he told her, I want you to be my wife. How long and how old she's going to be before she become your wife is the question. Is well, she going to be in her 50s? I mean, what's going on? She didn't tell us if he was in school, trying to get a, you know better himself at a later age, get a new job. We don't know none of that. But I do know this. A man knows what he wants. And if he want to pursue you, months. he's going to pursue you to make you his wife because my husband did it to me. Well, before Rick answers, you know, one of our Facebook um, fans are saying that um, she should dump him, that she's 40 and she's running out of time. 
She really is. Well, I mean, it's nothing well, wrong with almost getting, 40. I mean, yeah. if you want to have children, it's like, come on. Yeah, so yeah they you know. said leave them under the car. Leave them okay. under, <laughs> under the leave car. Leave them under the car, <laughs> not leave them in the car. Wait a minute, roll <laughs> him over. Leave them under the car. Oh, that, that's funny. Hey, you know, what? What my thought about this is that uh, – <laughs> That this person is a uh, thirty six years old, and 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 for a woman at thirty six, uh, that that is if you start want to start a family, you you're thinking about I'm getting too old, That's true. and so she is very concerned about the fact that you know she's going to be past childbearing years, and so that's a big concern of hers. And my thing is is that if that is a big concern of yours, and you've been dating this person for four years. One, uh, did the letter say that she, she talked to him about getting married? He said he was going to get married, right? Is that what it said? Yeah. He said he's going to get married. He want to make her his wife. Her. Right. And so as heart to heart says, you know, brother need to step up. And, and my thing is to you is you need to let him know that that's what you're looking for this year. Right. Or you're about to go find someone that wants to be married to you. I agree. Now, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, what Chirac did. I think if you are having sex, which is you shouldn't be, you need to huh. stop. Okay? So, I mean, yeah. hey, I'm just telling, I'm being honest. You need to stop. Sex? What's that? You know, so <laughs> you know, so you need to stop that because, you know, sometimes that milk-free causes a brother not to, to think right. Mm-hmm. That's so, true. you know, let's just be honest because that's the, the thing. If you want to have children, because you said, you know, the girl might get, she, he might find her married and pregnant with somebody else. Let's hope the pregnancy didn't come first, then he got married. But no, and a good point I'm trying to make, like you said, um, putting the copy for the horse and giving away the milk free and everything. We women, and like I said, we wait, we patient, we want to work with you. And she probably still giving her stuff to him, but that woman did in the year from now, believe me, he pursued her, he courted her, he was the hunter for her. He did everything right to get her to be his wife. And he probably was just stringing along this woman, which she don't even know, she might be just a side chick. Well, and it might be the case, but the thing about it is, is that you've got to make the decision now that, I'm not going to be the side chick anymore. Because let me tell you something. Until you become the main one, you're always the side. Mm-hmm. You are absolutely I don't right. care. I don't care if that's the only person you're talk- he's talking to at that time. After a certain amount of years, a man does know which direction he wants to go into. And if you all are talking about it, now you've got to go from talk to plan. So you you've got to make the decision to let them know. Hey, we've talked about it. Now let's plan it. And you gotta you gotta set some some um, deadlines. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and it's hard. You know, I've been there, done that. It's 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 hard. But I think that once you make that decision, it becomes easier to move on. But you gotta make it and stick with it. Use your girlfriends for support. Uh, use your family. You know, because once you cut them off, cut him off. Right. And that's so hard for women. I don't get it. I don't get because, it. Yeah, we Women clean and hold on. Cut, cut the umbilical cord. You right. Know. Please. And, 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 you know, you find other things to keep you occupied. And I understand, like you say, you know, she wants children and everything. But I guarantee you, once you walk away, the right man can walk in. Yeah, there you that go, because you have to close that door, because you Before could be blocking you your another. own blessings there right you go. there. Yeah, okay, you're absolutely so. right. <laughs> so, um, highly disappointed. I hope we gave you some good advice. We was being honest with you. Like every woman know, you know what you want, when you want it, and you know who you want. So you have both perspectives from females and males over here. And if a male tell you to keep moving, you might need to keep moving. Yeah, dump, what did he say, leave him under the car? Leave him <laughs> under the car. Right, hey, we under. Like, we like to thank all our Facebook people who have uh, contacted us. You still haven't contacted us on the motiva- Motivation Mojo uh, win tickets, so uh, we're still waiting for that person to contact us on our uh, Facebook page or our uh, website. I'm looking on my um, phone right now to see if I get any uh, uh, f- uh, website information on there. And uh, and I'm assuming they have to be here in town. Correct? Yeah. Well, th- you know, you can we can give you st- we can send you tickets anyway as long as you let us know uh, what theater you want. I can get the tickets oh. for that. Oh. Uh, if not, then I'll get you some Chicago tickets that you can't use. No, <laughs> I'm you kidding. Can send to us. <laughs> uh, but we we hope that uh, you will uh, call in. If not, then we'll save those tickets uh, for uh, next week. Okay, then you know I want to take you guys to next week topic real quick. We'll be talking about remembering 
MLK, not Milk, but Martha Luther King. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going to say the, the proper name, Reverend Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. It's going to be a great show next week and a big weekend. Yeah, that's going to be a great show for me because that is uh, my hero, Martin Luther King. I uh, patterned my life after uh, Martin Luther King. I can see that. For the man that I wanted to be because he was just, you know, an inspiration to me. I could still hear his voice now, and it just it just sears tears in my eyes just hearing him speak. You know, well, it's just he is it's a, a powerful he speaker. He is an amazing man who uh, came from nowhere to become uh, a powerhouse for the African American community. So we will be talking about him uh, for uh, Martin Luther King uh, Week, and also uh, we'll be talking about Black History uh, subjects in February. All yes, right. we will. So um, the McCain train has pulled into our last stop, and we would like to say thank you to our guests, Sergeant Emery Holmes, David Steele, and Tracy Howard, our social media specialist, and our producer, Alvin Washington Jr., for another great show. So, babe, let's leave these people, our great listeners, with a thought for the day. Yeah, so um, I don't know. You guys got any thoughts for the day that you want to share? Live your best life. And when I say that, I know it sounds cliche. A lot of people say, I don't have too much going on right now. How can I begin to live my best life? But you can do it. You can do whatever you put your mind to it. Just start off like I I believe it was in my um, motivational mojo myself. My thing this year is every day to come closer to my goal or what I want to do. And if it's 30 minutes, because I love to write, if it's 30 minutes, put pen to paper or fingertips to the keyboard to write something. And it's tranquil and it gives me a peace of mind and to help others and to to not pray selfishly is something I want to do because I know God knows my heart and knows what I'm thinking. And I've been through a lot the past 30 days, and I keep wondering why God is testing me, but it's only making me stronger and not weaker. Well, Brenda, Brenda is so much sweeter than I am because my thing this year is just to um, t- t- uh, take leaps of faith and uh, take risks and don't be afraid to try new things. So that's what I'm trying to do and stay motivated to do this year. That's good. Yeah. I'm going to get on that bandwagon, too. Uh, you will. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you got my stuff playing. I okay. got you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, my uh, thought of the, uh, the day uh, is basically um, to tell people uh, who have went through some trials and tribulations today, don't count today as your year. And I want to just say that again. Don't count today as your year. Today, if you had a difficult day today, uh, do something like this: the uh, the segment we have. Leave it in the car. Don't allow it to change the individual that you are. Don't allow it to be uh, something that you carry into your house, that you share with your family. Don't place it on your children. Don't place it on your husband. Don't place it on your wife. If you're, uh, if you, it was a frustrating day at work uh, today. Don't allow that to be your tomorrow. I want you to be able to take the negative part of today and learn from it, so you will not be destroyed by the foundation that was laid upon to destroy you. You have to be able to be an overcomer, someone that will achieve great things. And a lot of times, great things have to go through great sacrifices. So you have to be prepared to know that there are going to be trials and tribulations in your life that you can overcome. You've got to start overcoming tomorrow today because if tomorrow brings you trials and tribulations, you've got to be able to take that situation and overcome it already in your mind today that it doesn't destroy your tomorrow or your year. So for those of you all who have went through a hard time today, Take a step back, breathe, and look over all the things that have happened and say to yourself, you know what? I made it anyhow. I was able to make it through today through all the trials and tribulations that came against me. And you know what? Because I made it today, I can already see my success tomorrow. And that's what I want you to do today. For those of you all who've had a great day, continue it. Learn from that and say, you know what? There were some great things that happened, and I want to make sure they're even greater tomorrow. Your greatness lies in your faith and your belief that you can overcome anything 
that comes against you. For as the Bible says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So that's my thought for the day. A long one. <laughs> it was a long one. That it was, but, but uh, it was on point. Though. I just want to let everybody know that you can do it. If it's, if it's something that you want to do, you can do it. Hey, I really hope you all enjoyed uh, the, the show today. Did you enjoy the show today, baby? It was fun. I yeah. had some great feedback. I know people are loving um, Leave It in the Car. Yeah. They took a bite at the McCain Express. And, you know, it's odd. They say they love Motivation Mojo, but you, you're not responding on well, Facebook. You're going to get a couple of people. You know, it's going to take some time for people to get used to it. So th- just to go through uh, some of the things that we did today before we get off of the air, we did the next stop, which is a new uh, thing that we're doing uh, for all the relationship situations. Uh, we did the McCain Train Express where we asked 15 questions of our guests, and they will answer those questions so we can find out a little bit more about them motivational mojo that's a new topic we're going to be doing just to encourage you to make you uh understand that uh god loves you and so do the mccain train Mm -hmm. Uh, and the mccain train does exist with tracy brown howard as uh one of our uh, mccain train drivers uh and we also had on here heart to heart inspirational corner making marriage work uh we also had on there uh leave it in the car and relationship letters And so uh, we're going to. uh... (laughs) We're going to give you that information uh, uh, each week uh, to let you know that um, we're going to be changing the uh, (laughs) format of our show. And uh, you actually you won't be hearing that that music anymore that you just heard Alvin play. We're going to be changing up everything about the Let's Stay Together show, the brand. You're going to see uh, a, a, um, a Let's Stay Together talk uh, YouTube station, and everything is going to be uh, uh, going on. So we want to be able to share with you more information about us and what we're doing and uh, how you can get in contact with us. So hope you enjoyed this show uh, and that you're going to be back next week uh, at 7, oh, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. Uh, Central <laughs> Time. I'm still thinking old time. And uh, for Brenda, for Tracy, for Alvin, and uh, for uh, Reverend McCain, who I am myself, we want to thank you all for uh, listening to the Let's Stay Together show. And uh, we'll hope to see you all back next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Right, thank you for listening. All right. Hey. Now boarding the McCain train with Reverend Rick and author Brenda McCain. They're bringing hot and powerful topics regarding relevant issues on marriage, relationships, and life-changing family topics. And they are funny, engaging, energetic, and they bring real talk that reaches beyond the walls of the church. They have been successful because they have discussed topics like, Help me, I want to grow old. My addiction is hurting my relationship. Aborted but not forgotten. Living in an HIV-AIDS relationship, the hand that loves me is hurting me. So if you want to know their glory, you have to know their backstory. So get on board the McCain train and listen to the Let's Stay Together Internet Talk Show. Hi, this is Reverend Rick McCain. And this is Brenda McCain. We'd like to thank you for listening to the Let's Stay Together talk show. And riding the McCain train every Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m.